As the Vic Mignogna sexual allegation stories continue to deepen following the events of Monica Rial having to put out a public statement, many fans on both aisles of the spectrum for the hashtag Kick Vic movement and for the hashtag I Stand with Vic movement have been calling out Monica Rial's recent public statement in criticisms involving her testimony in questioning her overall stance and why she hasn't said anything especially if the supposed events involving Vic Mignogna and Monica Rial actually happened during the mid-2000s, it would have prevented a lot of people in having to fall victim under Vic Mignogna if, of course, Vic Mignogna had been proven to be guilty. Well, we have some answers as to why that is, which again, I highly encourage you all to go on ahead and punch that subscribe button and enable all notifications to always be in the loop and notified whenever brand new information, leaks, and info comes out on the Monica Real and Vic Mignogna situation, so make sure you guys go on ahead and hit that subscribe button and slap a like down below if you guys just love anime and Dragon Ball as a whole and would like for this entire situation to subside as a user by the name of Emish's Live actually pointed something out as he went on to state which I do recommend you guys following him at Twitter and stating I09 put out an article claiming that they spoke with various voice actors in regards to their allegations on hashtag kick Vic. Looking at the Monica statements and the Charlotte in the article they are the same person. They later go on to mention Monica as if they are two separate people. Okay, basically inciting the idea that Monica's testimony is eerily similar to a person that goes by the name of Charlotte in the I09 article. Now what the I09 article is, is basically testimonies from various voice actors that came out and speaking against Vic Mignogna, in which as you guys can see on screen, Charlotte's testimony goes as follows. Voice actor Charlotte, not her real name, confirmed to I09 that she shared her story with Funimation for her investigation. She relayed to IO9 her experience, one which Mignana denied in email responses to IO9's questions. Charlotte said that at a con in the late 2000s, she was getting ready to go to dinner with Mignana and some other con guest employees. Mignana asked if they can stop by his room first because he wanted to show her a video and she agreed. Both were in relationships, Mignana now with his ex-fiancee Michelle and Charlotte with her now then boyfriend. She believed the investigation was platonic. Now again, this is eerily similar. Charlotte's, the supposed Charlotte's person statements are eerily similar to Monica Rial's statements as in her testimony, she goes on to state, and I quote, in the mid 2000s, we were at a convention together and he grabbed me and kissed me in a hotel room. I froze. You may wonder why I didn't yell or scream or push him away. I was scared. Why? Because I was raped as a teenager and I learned that sometimes fighting back makes it worse. Why did I go to his room? Because he asked me to watch a video and I had trusted him because he was my friend. Not only that, but he was also dating my friend Michelle and I had been flirting with my soon to be boyfriend at the convention all week. Weekend. Notice how that in and of itself is eerily similar to Charlotte's testimony. Now again, I'm not saying that Monica Rial is lying, but you have to compare the empirical evidence. You have to look at what Charlotte put out and you have to look at what Monica put out and how eerily both of their testimonies are in having this occur roughly around the 2000s at some rinky dink convention in which we don't even know the names of these conventions with the scenario having to be eerily similar of Mignogna having to invite these people to his hotel room to watch a video and you know taking it from there so right now I'm going to show you guys a video from Emish's live over on his YouTube channel in which I will leave his video link down below make sure you guys go ahead and support him and support that video I want you guys to watch this video and let me know in the comments as to what you guys think about all of this as you're presented with the overall narrative of the fandom and what they see in Monica Rial's testimony so have a look and again make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to be notified and let me know your thoughts down below here we go there's no way this would hold up i don't know what she was thinking putting this stuff out in the mid 2000s we were at a convention together and he grabbed me and kissed me in his hotel room i froze you may wonder why i didn't yell or scream or push him away yeah i'm wondering that just because you mentioned that it happened a few times before you you said that this stuff happened okay wait 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 you said that this stuff was uh, the the hair pulling, the fist full. This is force. This is physical. This is a lot of force. You need some kind of force behind that, okay, to do that kind of stuff. So you're basic. You said whenever he saw me, he would do that stuff. So this is whenever. Meaning, and then yet you've only spoken to him twice about it because these are your words on Twitter, you know. And then you you've tried to address his behavior with him. He's only he, and every time he sees you, he does this. 
So that wasn't enough, right? When he did this, you spoke to him about this kind of behavior. But when he, when you, when you were in his hotel room for whatever reason, he kissed you, and then you expect me to not wonder why you didn't yell or scream or push him away or report him, despite you acknowledging that you spoke to him before, despite you acknowledging that you knew about this baby for 15 plus years, and then changing your story to say that I just found out about it after the premiere because some friends told me about it, and that's when I thought my my forgiveness for him was misplaced. So you. This is you. This is this is you, Monica. Like you're not a victim of anything. You know, it, this this is the problem. Oh my god, this is this is bad. I was scared. Why? Because I was raped as a <sighs> Because I was raped as a teenager, and I learned that sometimes fighting back makes it worse. Why did I go to his room? After acknowledging that you were raped as a teenager. Why did I go to his room? Because he asked me to watch a video and I trusted him because he was my friend. After acknowledging his behavior previously in the previous two paragraphs, you still somehow thought he was a friend of yours. But he was dating my friend Michelle and I had been flirting with my soon-to-be boyfriend at the convention all weekend. Well, it's a good thing that you didn't accuse him of anything. After that experience, I distanced myself from him. And unfortunately, uh, Michelle as well, I felt incredibly guilty even though I hadn't done anything wrong. Yeah, uh, I went to therapy and worked on forgiveness. I chose to forgive him for what he had done. So you didn't go to therapy to help you cope with, uh, with your experience or reliving a potential nearly close, nearly identical experience to being raped as a teenager. You didn't, you didn't go to therapy for that. You went to therapy to forgive someone who made you re, who you are, who you're accusing of making you relive or potentially relive a scenario that you, that you lived as a teenager. Um, maybe it was just me. Maybe it was a one-time thing never to re be repeated again. What are you talking about? I gotta calm down because maybe I'm reading this wrong. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just maybe it was just me. Maybe it was a one-time thing never to be repeated again. So she's referring to the hotel incident. Despite acknowledging the other stuff that happened previously or despite bringing that stuff up first because when you bring that stuff up first and then you said that you addressed him about his behavior and that he saw nothing wrong with it and then you go to his hotel room after saying that whenever he sees you that he pulls your hair and kisses your neck and basically you know, dominates you in front of fans and colleagues, and colleagues would also include other voice actors, con organizers, convention organizers, and potentially Funimation staff, and whoever, whatever company that you're working for, all of this stuff is being allowed to happen in front of people, and then you go on to say that you were raped as a teenager, then you said that you were scared because you didn't want to fight back, so you're basically insinuating that if you had fought back, he would have raped you in his hotel room. What are you talking about? You can imagine my devastation when I learned that I wasn't the only one. That it was happening to colleagues and worse yet, convention attendees. Convention attendees. All the pictures and messages that are being passing around were taken at the press events and premiere of the Broly movie in mid-December. About two weeks after that, three of my close friends came forward. When these friends shared their stories with me, I was heartbroken. How could this happen to three of my close friends without me ever knowing? Despite... Despite you, ah, oh, fuck me. As more people came forward, I began to see the similarities. I chose to share my testimony with investigators solely because it, co it corroborated the other's testimony. I didn't start this. I have nothing to gain from it. <clears throat> I didn't steal anyone's roles or titles. The stuff you're hearing on YouTube is all lies attempted to create drama and get subs or views. I am perfectly content with being just a voice actor. Well, that's besides the point because only a small portion of people are trying to say that you're trying to steal his position. Nobody care. I don't give a shit about that, okay? <clears throat> the main problem is that a lot of this stuff isn't necessarily lies because they're being based on statements that you have said yourself, things that you've claimed yourself. That's what you don't seem to understand. And this statement isn't isn't adding up with things that you've said before. So I don't understand. Like, it's you're right. You don't have much to gain from it. But what I'm seeing from this is that you saw that people were backlashing at your friends and colleagues, right? The same friends and colleagues who claim to have happened to that that had happened to them. The same friends and colleagues that you just said in your statement said that he treated you this way in front of their face. <coughs> <coughs>
over the course of X amount of years that you've only addressed him twice about, and then you went to you went to his hotel and had you fought back, you're basically insinuating that he would have raped you, okay? And you, first, you didn't even tell us what happened after that incident, like the hotel incident. You just said that you were in, you were in his hotel, he did this to you, and then that's it. We just skipped to something else about your friends bringing this to your attention after the Broly premiere, two to three weeks after the Broly premiere, which means that he was... So he was treating you this way in front of the same colleagues that it happened to, and none of them said anything about this, right? But then two or three weeks after, they decided, you know what? Well, <laughs> let's just press charges. I'm going to go to an investigator now, and that investigator... I don't really know if it was a legal investigator, like an actual investigator, or if it was within the company, because you just also go on to say that the stuff was happening in front of friends and colleagues, colleagues that also work for the same company that you work for, convention staff, because you also go on to mention that it happened to convention attendees, convention, which means that it arguably has to have happened to convention staff, because some people from convention staff have also been supporting this idea, which doesn't necessarily add up to the story or the claim that you're making, but going on to continue reading, the investigators were incredibly thorough. So this is the... the internal investigations god damn it cat stop meowing please the investigations were inc incredibly thorough no they weren't each person was interviewed the evidence weighed and a decision was made first of all this stuff was we knew about this stuff prior to funimation coming out with their quote-unquote statement which is why i was saying my thoughts are that funimation should have came out with the statement regarding the information that's been going on and to make it seem like they're at least trying to be professional about it but we already got news of, of uh, vic mignano having canceled appearances to conventions and being canceled to shows that ha that are tied to funimation and company b before funimation even put out a statement this is stuff that was that was done and they said that it was an internal investigation now what an internal investigation is it's basically the human resources department the hr what these things what these and by ironically enough they get paid by the company themselves by the way so it's not an actual legal investigation there's nothing legal about it it's handled within the company and it's still susceptible to major bias depending on what's said so obviously vic walks into a room and 15 people that work for the same company ironically enough the same company that she just claimed the same colleagues all this stuff that's happening that she claimed that they all knew about for 15 plus years which means that uh, she claimed on twitter by the way which means that they allowed it to happen and she claims herself in her first opening paragraphs that it wasn't just because of sexual harassment that director stopped working with him it was because he was difficult to work with which means that they should have let him go either then and there when the sexual harassment allegations are being made especially by friends and colleagues who also happen to work for the company because it's not good for the company or, or <laughs> so you see where i'm going with this this stuff just doesn't add up so that's interesting uh they, they, they weren't thorough. It was completely biased because recently we find out that Samantha Inoue Arte, who was the person who staged the fake swatting, who accused um, hashtag I stand with Vic supporters of swatting her because of her of her views, turns out that that was exposed recently. I'll link some videos and stuff like that in the video description. That that was exposed for her already making that claim in 2017, I believe it was. She claimed she didn't know who it was. People broke into And it's the same person. She used their Facebook page. And turns out that this person also works for Funimation, or formerly worked for Funimation because if you if you search up her credentials, she was uh, she was like the chocobo for Final Fantasy. She has a lot of like gigs that she's done, a lot of VA performances that she's done that are tied with Funimation. And then the director of events for Crunchyroll and Verve goes on to say that well, it comes it's come to our attention that yeah, we find out that it was a hoax, that it was false, but we come to find out that this person has clinical issues. So now they're using the mental health awareness card to try to distance the fact that. It's almost as if they knew who they were referring to. They try to act like they didn't know who they were referring to. They didn't know who Samantha Inoue Arte was, right? Sean, Sean Schemmel, <laughs> the Beta Goku, Beta Goku, right? You think, you think I'm a beta? My DMs are always open, but now they're not. The, the, the thing about this is that he also goes on to say, I'm very mad at the person for, for faking that stuff. She's, she's tied with Funimation. She was a part of the investigation. Simple as that. There's no, <laughs> what is going on here? Am I the only one that doesn't, I, I can't be the only one that isn't thinking this way. So Monica, this is why nobody believes you because you're, I'm not, I'm still not halfway through this, by the way. So no, the, the investigation was, was thoroughly biased. Okay. And that's why Vic is lowering up now because of the sequence of events that took place, because of how bad these people are fucking up because they're being exposed for you know, not really having a consistent argument. And this is the problem with rape allegations because, and sexual assault, even though they're not the same thing, because they're two different crimes entirely. The FBI and Bureau of Justice has different categories and different statistics for each rape, whether it's the, uh, the revised definition or legacy definition, because there's two, and then there's sexual offenses, which don't include rape and prostitution. There's two different categories. So 
she's mixing the two here, and then she's referencing why she didn't say anything because she was scared because she got raped as a teenager, which doesn't really make sense because why would you want to go through that again? Then says that she went to therapy to forgive him. So after being put through a, a, a nearly an eerily similar experience after being raped as a teenager, it, ha it potentially almost happened with Vic because that's what she's insinuating. Then she goes on to say that I, I went to therapy, I sought therapy so I could forgive him. None of this stuff makes sense. So that's the problem. So it wasn't a legal investigation, okay? It was handled within the company. So within the company's, you know, jurisdiction, it's legal technically, but it's not, you know, it's not something that you go to court and you can get an actual judgment on. They make a decision based on what these people tell them, which means that if that is the case, that if Vic was such a problem based on sexual harassment and based on based on uh, being difficult to work with, if this was such a problem, this internal investigation, based on their claims, proves that if they were saying something to Funimation and, and their colleagues and all these other companies and directors, that Vic would have been dealt with a long time ago. So all this stuff that she's saying doesn't add up and it doesn't support her case. That's my point. So if all this stuff right now is happening and people are finally kicking Vic, hashtag kicking Vic or whatever, you know, based on allegations that are based on an internal investigation, then this internal inve investigation could have or should have happened years ago throughout the 15 plus year time span that she has verbatimly stated on Twitter and on social media. So with that, we continue to go on. It says, I didn't want to come forward on Twitter, but I felt like I had to do something because my friends, lives, children, and careers were being threatened. Well, that's understandable. It's, an under it's understandable for people to be outraged and it's understandable for people to, you know, want to threaten and act like assholes on social media, especially on social media. And I don't condone that kind of, that kind of behavior whatsoever. But the problem is, you already acknowledged that you were in, that you, that you had gotten people, that you went to an investigator, so on and so forth. By then, they would have advised you to not speak about this on Twitter at all, and you still chose to do so anyway. So based on your own claims, you've kind of violated your own context. Now I'm assuming she's probably going to end up saying like, well, her, she's, you know, she wrote everything based on emotion and she was emotional. So she didn't really put everything in order. That would be her natural defense because the way she's descripting everything right now just seems completely out of place. and doesn't add up to the things that she's been saying on Twitter and basically everywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't add up to the things that her other voice actor colleagues have also come out to support her. And the idea, and the, I, let me just say this, the idea that these voice actors and her colleagues would support her on social media and not in real life when it counted and would watch her get treated that way you're all fucking pussies okay all of you guys sean shemmel chris sabbat Kara, all these people that claim to be so strong and claim to want to stand up for something and claim to want to set an example for people and talk all this bullshit on twitter and all this bullshit on panels and all this other junk you're all fucking pussies and monica these people aren't your friends by that logic because they don't get to watch you get treated this way for 15 years and not do a damn thing about it this is why your story doesn't add up. So all this supporting stuff, this is why it seems like there's an agenda. This is why you guys have to understand. This is why it seems like there's something behind it. There's something deeper for this, okay? And this is why the internal investigation that you guys claimed was extremely thorough is utter bullshit. Damn. I apologize for lashing out and threatening fans. I don't want to have... So you admit that you threaten fans. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to have to take people to court or send law enforcement after them, but I was doing what I felt necessary to protect myself at the time. No, you said you already went to an investigator. You said you contacted law enforcement, so on and so forth, and they said to do a simple thing, which you did not follow, okay? So there was no reason for you to feel like you would have to protect yourself because you couldn't even protect yourself as you verbatimly stated in this context, when you were a teenager, which is totally understandable because you claim to have gotten raped as a teenager, fine. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Okay, but moving forward, you claim that you couldn't even de defend yourself against someone who was pulling on your hair, kissing on your neck, and doing all sorts of these things, bringing you to a hotel room after you acknowledged that he did all these things whenever he saw you, but then after addressing, you, you claim that you addressed it only twice, all this stuff that's happening, it doesn't. this is why it doesn't add up, okay? This is exactly why it doesn't add up. So... When you went to law enforcement, that's the minute you should have felt that you were protected. There was no, there was nothing you can do to quote unquote protect yourself. Nothing you can do and nothing that you should have done. So all this, you know, damage control that you're trying to pull right now, no thank you. You can hold on to that. Uh, there is a watch list and I have the names and numbers of multiple harassers, but I'm willing to forgive you if you'll stop the madness now. Damage control, they won't stop. Um, you, what you define, what you think har uh, harassment is, is not, it's not harassment actually. So I'm not speaking up for the people that have actually made uh, threats. Fuck those guys. Uh, you may feel that my colleagues and I have been harsh. No, you've been stupid. Uh, but let me ask you this. How would you respond if your life was being threatened? Tell me! Answer the question, Monica Real. Let's answer the question together. What would we do if our life was feeling threatened? 
I don't know, contact law enforcement and Homeland Security and the FBI and the investigators, but you didn't do that. What you did was you contacted, you contacted an investigator and you only had an internal investigation, despite acknowledging previously that he took you into his hotel room and you insinuating that if you just let it happen that he wouldn't have fought back, but you didn't classify what happened after that. This is why these arguments don't hold up. This is why it doesn't make sense. Yes, if my life was if my life was threatened, I would take every course of legal action to prevent that from happening again. I wouldn't let it happen to me as a teenager, then let it happen to me again mul multiple times in front of friends and colleagues and fans, and then and then ask my colleagues and fans, the same people you're claiming to be your colleagues and fans and your friends, are allowing this stuff to happen to you, as for, as you state, whenever he sees you. It doesn't make sense. Oh my God, man! I don't know if I can continue with this. If the life of your loved ones, your friends. Your, your friend's children were being threatened if your addresses and phone numbers were being passed around like candy so people could call or drop just to antagonize you, kind of like the fake spot. Uh, that, that's different. That's completely outside of the topic because not everybody's doing that to you, Monica, okay? So don't you, don't you don't get to use a small minority of people and use that as a means to grandstand or justify your course of action because it doesn't make sense, okay? If that's how you feel about the entirety of the fandom, you made it evidently clear that you just feel this way about everybody and the fact that you thought you can grandstand this notion just, just because you're Monica Rial, the voice of Boma, just because people are Dragon Ball fanboys that if you came out with something that it would work because Sean tried the same shit and that shit didn't work out recently for him so I don't know what you were thinking but it obviously didn't work out in your favor if you were forced to be on the phone with various law enforcement lawyers every single day if people yes you have to do these things to prevent these things from happening okay so it just <coughs> you don't even care about yourself at this point that's what it sounds like if people were trying to get you fired just because you came forward with the truth Let's, I, I don't even need to address that. You guys are smart enough. If you were, if you were doxxed because people think it's fun to attack, to attack those who are hurting. It's interesting that you mentioned that. Let's move on to the next thing because I got to wrap this video up. It's too long. It's long enough as it is. Hopefully, if you guys are enjoying this, please subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. Okay, let's finish, let's wrap this fucking shit up. I've always stood up for this community. I have loved the anime fandom from the moment I went to my first convention, but this isn't about the anime fandom because people who aren't even fans of anime are also getting involved, okay? To be threatened like this by the community I love really hurts my heart. What are you talking about, okay? I don't... Your own friends you claimed watch you get your hair pulled and neck twisted and pulled back and kissed on the neck against your will. These are your friends and colleagues. Forget the community. Forget these assholes. I recently stood up for the Dragon Ball fandom only to have that community come back and attack me mercilessly. We don't owe you a damn thing, Monica Rial. Just like you supposedly said that you don't owe us shit. We don't owe you a goddamn fucking thing. Let me tell you why, okay? Because that chick was retarded. She's stupid. So you didn't stand up for us. You stood up for yourself. You stood up for you being a woman. You didn't stand up for us. Because if you were, you would have reported this motherfucker Vic 15 plus years ago, okay? You would have questioned why your friends and your colleagues and the company that is paying your bills allowed you to be treated like that on the open, to be treated like a piece of property by someone who wasn't even your fiance, who's a coward by the way, your boyfriend, who fucked that, whoever that was, or, or your brother or your father or nobody. You, I don't, you don't owe us shit. We don't owe you a goddamn thing. We don't owe you our blind trust, okay? Yeah, it was cool of you to do that, but the fact that you did that and expecting our blind, and expected for us to blatantly trust you simply because you're Monica Rial is fucked up. I don't owe you a fucking thing, and neither does the fandom. 